Love Talk Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, the fact that you are tuned in to the Blitz Hardcore Podcast means that you're awesome! Follow the right show if you are looking for an alternative to ESPN and their hot garbage. Thank you for listening to the show. Let's get ready for the podcast! You can't stop us. Uh, I'll get you guys started. 
Everyone is filtering into the new chat room. Uh, it's at hoopsopedia.webs.com. Click on podcasts. Scroll to the bottom of the page. And you have a uh, chat box on the bottom that's porn spam free. And like I said, guys, I'm going to upgrade it tomorrow. Uh, it should make things a little bit easier on you guys. And uh, this will be the chat spot from now on, just so you guys know. Um, so, Joseph and Tim, big story right now is Albert Pujols' injury. Joseph, I think this affects him uh, from a major standpoint as far as his contract. Uh, he had gotten off to a slow start. And uh, this is a big deal, man. This is a big deal. A uh, huge deal. You know, because this is a contending team without a doubt. Albert Pujols, like you said, slow start, but, you know, kind of looked like he was, uh, you know, coming around. Kind of like he was picking up pace in a few areas. Had this injury. He's been a real iron man in baseball. You know, hard, hardly ever misses time, especially any kind of extensive time. And, uh, you know, first big injury of his career, and this is um, not the news the Cardinals wanted. Kind of a fluke play as well. Um, you know, it didn't look all that bad from first sight, but, you know, obviously was a pretty bad injury. And uh, you got to wonder, not only is it going to affect Albert Pujols, obviously, now, but when he comes back, and also the team in the meantime, because they, they can't lose too much ground in that division. Yeah, I agree 100%. What do you think, Tim? Yeah, like Joseph said, he was starting to come around. I mean, this is a guy who career averages hit – well under the 300, and he was batting 270 something. He had had a home right. run earlier in that game. I mean, it was all, and it, it was a strange play. I mean, it, looking at it, it looks pretty innocent. And then you see him grab his wrist, but I mean, I think this ends any chance of him getting that 10-year, 300 million dollar contract anyone was talking about. And I think it increases his chances of staying in St. Louis because I think it brings the price down to where maybe St. Louis can afford keeping him long term. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you, man. And uh, he's still going to go to the highest bidder, and you know someone's going to pony up the money. You know someone will. But it does increase his chances of staying in St. Louis. Uh, but right now, guys, one thing I want to point out is both Boston and New York are playing great baseball. And the American League East is really starting to get exciting. Obviously, Boston has owned – the head-to-head matchups this year, but uh, at this point, Joseph, this is probably going to be a reoccurring question uh, throughout the season. Who do you think has the upper hand in that division alone? Yes, man. You know, I, I was leaning more heavily towards the Red Sox uh, last time we talked about this last week, but uh, you know, I'll tell you what, the Yankees look to be playing a little better right now. They really do. They've, uh, you know, they swept the Texas Rangers. They uh, got two out of three against the Cubs, all away games. You know, they beat uh, Cincinnati, and it looks like they've won, you know, six of their last seven. So uh, that being said, you know, you look at Boston, still playing well, still, you know, have more wins than the Yankees have played a few more games. Um, So they got the edge in the division. But, um, i say it's about even. If I can go that route right now, I'm going to say last week, Boston, this week, New York's gained ground on him, and I'm going to put him right at the same spot. I think it's about even. You know, they've got the head-to-head matches, but as of late, I think they've been playing about equal, and I, that might that might mean this is going to go down to the wire to the end of the season. we got to wait and see. Can't forget about Tampa Bay. They're only a few games back, so they'll be in the mix too, but uh, New York's playing better. New York is starting to play better, and uh, I, I like to see that for my Yankees. Woo! <laughs> Spoken like a true Yankee fan, wasn't it, Tim? That's right, Tim. That's yeah, right. my God. So what do you think, Tim? No. Um, I, I picked the Red Sox to win the World Series coming in this year, and I took a lot of heat for sticking with that pick, and it's starting to come around. I mean, the Yankees, while they have a good team and a good lineup, it's an older lineup, and you got to think Curtis Granderson's going to come back to earth at some point. And when he does, yeah. it's going to open up a lot of the holes that the Yankees have in that pitching. 
And bullpen-wise and starting-wise, heaven forbid Rivera got injured now because they've already lost Soriano and Jabba Chamberlain. For the Red Sox, I mean, right now I think they have the best player in the MLB, the guy who I picked to win the MVP, Adrian Gonzalez. And their pitching depth with guys like John Lester and Clay Buchholz and their bullpen depth with Jonathan Papelbon, it's just way better than what the Yankees have. Yeah, yeah great points, man. Uh, and I know that it probably hurts for Joseph to hear, but he, he's right on, Joseph. Uh, uh, you but, know, you know I, we, we can't okay. predict what kind of injuries Boston's going to have later in the season either. we got we got oh, to well. see how things develop. You never know, all right? The Yankees, okay, man, they're going to be right there. Who are you trying to convince with that one? You. Okay, Le- okay LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> LeBron, the Yankee fan, is on the line. Oh, um, right. Yeah, I take that as a direct insult to my dad, okay, because that's the reason I'm a Yankee fan. I don't know how many times i got to come on this dang show and say why I'm a Yankee fan because of my dad, but I guess I'll just keep saying it. All right, I'll retract the statement out of respect <laughs> for my friend. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> what do you think about – what do you guys think about – Adrian Gonzalez moving to the outfield. Um, um go, go ahead, Tim. I'm gonna I'm gonna read up on that. Yeah, I actually didn't even hear about that. Where where are they planning to move him to? Uh, I know that they're moving him to the outfield. Yeah, it would I'm probably not be sure right what field. position. Uh, yeah, yeah it would I think it be, is right field. Yeah, but they're taking him away from through. first base. Yeah. He's got a good glove, and I think he has the body build to play the outfield. They got Kevin Euclid over at third base, who has been at first base most of his career, so that shouldn't be any problem. I don't know who they're putting at third base, but as long as it doesn't affect him mentally in the field, which could translate to his hitting, which is why you don't like to mess with a guy who's playing that well, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. I mean, it's a short right field. It's not like you're asking him to go out and play in left field with the monster. Right, right. Uh, Tim, there's a rumor about A. Rod possibly battling a shoulder injury. Uh, what are you reading into this? Do you, do you think that has anything to do with? I mean, he's not playing out of this world baseball right now. Let's be honest. But uh, do you buy into that, or do you think it's just an excuse? Uh, I think it's about half of that, and half of it being. Um him just slowing down. I mean, people can bring in the whole steroid thing if they want. I'm not going to go that route. Um, I just think he's starting to slow down a bit, and I think that's a bad thing for the Yankees considering he's under contract for about seven more years, which should be assigned to teams. Maybe giving Albert Pujols that deal for that much money for 10 years is not a good idea because eventually these great players do slow down. Right, yes. Yes, they do. They absolutely do. Uh, Another topic I wanted to bring up is uh, who do you guys think, you know, the Phillies have been looking for that right-handed bat for a while now. Tim, who is out there who they could possibly go after to fill? I mean, they've made it obvious they want to fill that slot and just haven't been able to do it to the standard that they want to at this point. Who can they go after, Tim? Hunter Pence has been the big name out there, but they really cannot afford him unless they move Joe Glenn's salary, and being that he has missed most of the season, that's just not going to happen. He's back now, though. Um, He's back now. He came back on yeah, Tuesday, but, right, yesterday? Yeah, but he's yes. with $8 million, He and he had like a five-and-a-half ERA last year. No one wants that contract, so that's not going to be moved. Uh, And they're not going to be able to afford getting 100 pence unless they were able to do something like Raul Obanez. Um, The two names I'm hearing legit would be Michael Kadire of the Twins, although he's due a lot of money. And Ken Rosenthal, Fox Sports, brought up probably not a popular name, but a more realistic name, Ryan Spielborgs of the Rockies. He's not a long-term solution, but he's probably better than what they're going to have out there. Yes, I agree 100%. So do you guys think, with the injury of Albert Pujols, 
how much exactly is this going to hamper the St. Louis Cardinals? Can they rally, or you know, can they rally the troops without him, or is Milwaukee now going to start to run away with the division? No disrespect to the Reds, but is this now Milwaukee's division to lose, Joseph? I wouldn't go that far because um, it's not like Pujols was, you know, tearing it up this entire season and they were still managing to play fairly well. So I can see, you know, Milwaukee maybe going up, you know, four or five games potentially during this uh, injury, uh, during his uh, recuperation time. But uh, I I don't think they're going to run away with it because, you know, St. Louis has been playing pretty well uh, with Pujols playing good or with him not playing good. So I think they're still going to be in the mix. Yes, yeah, I, I think they will be in the mix, but I, I got to tell you, Joseph, I think at this point in time, it is now Milwaukee's division to lose. What do you think, Tim? I felt at the beginning of the season that the Cardinals would win the division and the Brewers would win the wild card, and I think we may see it flip the other way now. I mean, for the Cardinals, a guy that's got to step up. I mean, they've gotten good pitching from guys like Jaime Garcia. they got to have Chris Carpenter step up. When they lost Adam Wainwright, he needed to step up, and he has not done it. He's got to step up. And uh, Matt Holliday's really got to carry this lineup. As far as the Brewers, I think right now they should win, but a guy who is really helping them to be successful right now is Zach Grinke, and he has a ton of injury issues. So I don't think it's out of the question that that could hamper their season as well. Yes, it could. It could. Um, I guess we'll have to wait and see because you never know, man. The Cubs might make a run. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> just playing. Uh, so, you know, there's a something that's been put out there um, by the Texas Rangers catcher. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name. Yorvit Torrealba. Is that right, Tim? Yeah, Yorvit right. Torrealba. Okay, your V. Tori Alba, who claims that he caught Andrew Jones of the New York Yankees trying to steal signs. Now, of all teams in the major leagues, what a shock. The asshole Yankees are stealing signs, Joseph. Oh, oh my goodness. Are you kidding me? Like, they're the only team that might steal signs? Come on. (laughs) <laughs> that whole New England That whole New England part of the United States Are all freaking cheaters Red Sox do it oh. You had you had the Patriots spy gate You have the Boston Celtics Screwing games all the time It's all screwed up there bro So wow. that's instead of you know, you What know, the exactly Yankees might... is cheating about stealing signs? Boston, Boston Red Sox fans Call now Joseph is slandering your team when his team is the one that got caught stealing signs, Joseph. It's, look, everyone does it, okay? So you no, can't even call no, it cheating. No, no, no. Oh, come on, dude. No, yeah, no. Philly's got called you last have clear, year. The Cubs you have these little, stealing many signs. You have these li- yeah, well, that's because they don't have anyone smart enough on the team. But you have all these little water boys that, that get the binoculars in the outfield and steal. I mean, you, you have all this kind of crap that goes on, been going on for 100 years. So I I don't think it's that big of a deal, to be honest. Of course. Well, what if it was the Red Sox stealing signs, bro? Oh, well, hey, fair game. (laughs) All right, I'll shut up, Joseph. Go ahead, Tim. The Phillies got caught last year. Their bullpen coach was looking with binoculars, which is just idiotic. But I, I don't get what's cheating about stealing signs. They never have. I mean, the Patriots beat the my Eagles in the Super Bowl, and people around here want to say that they cheated to win it. No, Donovan McNabb choked. There's a difference. I could care less. I steal signs in baseball when I get the chance to, too. I, I don't view it as cheating. I view it as smart baseball. Okay. I view it as cheating, personally. But that, I guess that's just me on this show. And damn cheaters. Damn Yankees. <laughs> hey, hey, I, I want to ask Tim something really fast because this is a team that was having an absolutely pathetic season 
okay? And they usually have expectations. You had Minnesota playing like crap, and now they've logged seven wins in a row, nine of their last ten. And also, Tim, what about Washington? They've won nine of their last ten as well. What do you think about those two teams? Because this kind of came out of nowhere, and especially Washington. They're right in the mix. You know, they're not too far off uh, Atlanta now. I mean, they're still kind of, you know, behind, but not compared to what they were. So do you think either of those teams have a chance to make the wild card? The, not the Nationals. I mean, they got nope. bright future. They, they got bright future with Harper and Strasburg and Luis Espinosa and Ian Wait Desmond. Wait a second, though. I really want to talk to you about Strasburg. What right. the hell? I mean, this guy came out like gangbusters. Do you think he was overrated from the jump? No, I do not. I was having this argument five and three with a two ninety one ERA. This guy yeah, is going to go ERA. down as he he is going to go down as one of the better pitchers of all time if he can Ooh. stay healthy. If he can stay healthy, he has this stuff. His pitches move amazing. He can throw a hundred miles an hour. This guy is the real deal. And he's going to be back next year, and he is going to excite baseball, something it really needs. Well, yeah, baseball does need a little bit of a shot in the arm. Hey, Joseph, I saw Sean get on the line for a second. Why don't you hang oh, okay. up, give him a call, and see what the hell's going on? I'd like to bring him into this. All right, I'll, I can stay on. I'll text him. Okay, yeah, text him. And Do Joseph you want me to... Is- Talk about the uh, Nationals and Twins now? Yeah. Go ahead, brother. Okay. For the Nationals, I, I just I don't see the pitching depth there this year. I think in a few years when they get Harper, when they get Strasburg back, when they add a few pitch, pitchers, I mean, they got Jason Worth there who isn't worth the deal, but he's still a good player. Yeah. They'll be ready because the Phillies lineup is getting pretty old. The Braves – they just don't have it there. Something about that team they don't have. For the Twins, I think they still have a legit chance because the Indians are fading. I mean, as Drupal Cabrera is carrying that team right now, but the pitching is just dying off for them. The, the Royals, Sox suck. The, yeah, the White Sox. I mean, I picked them to win that division and maybe even go to the ALCS. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I'm going to show Tigers everybody are, something real quick before you continue. On Ustream. All right, everyone, look at my Ustream right now. I'm going to show you something that I I have on right now. Let me just step up here. Got on my White Sox shorts. Not a White Sox hater. Love the Cubs, love the Sox. The White Sox aren't getting it done this year. So there you go. Yeah, but I, I think, you know, the thing that gets me, man, is the White Sox have a lot of talent on that team, and I just don't understand it. They make some bonehead plays. They've got what I consider – what do you think of Ozzie Gann? I want to elaborate on the White Sox with you. What do you think of Ozzie Gann? And do you – see, Tim, I don't think people understand how hard it is for a position player – to go to the DH spot where he's not active during the game anymore. You start to outthink your at-bats. You know, I mean, what else do you have to do between at-bats? Yeah, I You know don't stay you as loose. Well, so they've got the batter's cage that they can go into in the clubhouse, you know. But with that being said, I think that's why Adam Dunn's struggling is because, you know, the DH position. But do you think – that Ozzie Guillen is still getting it done. Or in baseball, we've seen so many times where these teams have to make a change to get the type of results that they're looking for. I mean, sometimes change is good. Yeah, I mean, I I think Ozzie Guillen's style can only work in a place so long, and I think it's worn thin. I think he'd be good for a young team. I, I just I don't think he's good enough for them anymore. As far as Adam Dunn, I mean, we saw Pat Burrell here in Philly. He was a not very good fielder, but he was a very good hitter for 10 years or so. He went. To, he didn't resign with the Phillies. He went to the Rays to play DH, and he just couldn't get it done. He went back to the National League with the Giants last year, and he went on fire. And, I mean, I've played EH 
or a DH for a baseball, and I understand it too. I mean, because w- when you have a bat at bat, you can go out in the field and make a great play and think, yeah, yes. I almost made up for that. I mean, Adam yes. Dunn has always said, I don't want to go to the AL because I want to still play in the field, even though he's a horrendous fielder. You're right, he's <laughs> overthinking it. He is too, brother. I don't think people understand. You know, and imagine if the Sox didn't re-sign Paul Konerko where they'd be. You know, it'd be, they'd even, be even worse. Yes, yes. Well, they Paul already Konerko, are. a guy, well, yeah, they are. They are. The Sox and the Cubs, I mean, there was all this anticipation here in the city of Chicago for the White Sox and all of this cloud of doubt with the Cubs, and they're basically having identical seasons, you know. But anyway, I'll let you get back to what you're talking about. I just wanted to shoot the shoot the crap here with you on Ozzie again. I'm with you. I think that his, his style is worn thin. As much as I like him, I think it's time to make a move. But go ahead, brother. You mean about the Twins in the division? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I think they can still make a run. The Tigers have a very good young team, but Justin Verlander has been the best pitcher in the major leagues this year. Maybe that slows down. Max Scherzer's done a great job for them this year. Maybe he slows down a little bit. The Tigers are a good team, but in a real division, they're like an 84-win team. So I don't think anything special to them. The the Twins got to continue to play like this if they're going to have a chance, but I think the talent is there for them to have a chance. Well, yeah, I mean, there definitely is a chance, but in the truest sense, sense of the word, you know, they're playing. Well, guys, I think we about covered all bases tonight. Uh, Joseph, I don't know about you, but I want to have time to cut an Uvu video. So uh, I think we'll cut it off there, guys. You got anything else you want to add, Tim? I mean, no, I'm good. All right. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed our baseball show. Uh, the chat on hoopsopedia.webs.com is open 24-7. And it's so officially guys- going crazy. It is. I yes. mean, the people. <laughs> well, yeah, they're having fun in there. They're oh, having yeah. fun in there. So you guys can get on there and chat to each other 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Enjoy yourselves. Uh, I might be replacing that with a better one here maybe tomorrow if I get time. But uh, I think it was a good show, guys. I It was fun talking some baseball, Joseph. Oh, yeah. We need to, man. Starting to pick up. You know, basketball's ended. Uh, time to move on to some other sports. Yes, it is. And, Tim, I mean, your passion with the game of baseball, you've been – Tim, folks, Tim has been persistent. He's like, when are we going to do the baseball podcast? <laughs> when are we going to start this? Let's get it going. And, Tim, now you know where you can be every uh, every Tuesday night. You can uh, do your homework, you know, before each show and bring us the knowledge that you have. You're obviously a very knowledgeable baseball guy, and we love having you on the team. All right, thanks, Bruce. All right, man.